Hope you're having a good day today. It is December 10th. Our reading today comes from the book of Philippians. Check the description for the full reading, but we're just going to be looking in Philippians today. Chapter 2, let's read verses 12 through 14. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure, do all things without complaining and disputing. And I was thinking about verse 14, that it's just easy to be like Israel of old and just complain. And, and it happens, and it, it shouldn't happen, but it does happen. What sort of things, what, what can help us to not complain? What sort of ideas? I would suggest there's a few ideas here in, in these first two chapters to help us with this issue. Why should we not complain? When we're, when, when we're facing trials, why should we not complain when things are difficult? Well, why shouldn't we complain? Well, let's, let's look at the account. Let's back up a little bit to chapter 1. Well, let's see if I can get over there with you. In chapter 1, where Paul is talking about, of course, this is one of the prison letters. He's in prison. And he says in verse 12, he says, I want you to know, brethren that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel, so that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. So that's one reason you shouldn't complain when you're... Paul, if anybody could have complained, it probably could have been Paul, and he doesn't complain. He says, you know what? The the things that a lot of people would say, oh, he just can't do any good, he, he said, it's actually turned out for the better. It is actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. Okay? Not, not necessarily his betterment, but the gospel, the furtherance of the gospel, the thing that matters, that it's, it's turned out. Good has, good has come from it. That's the key. Good has come from it. Of course, later on in chapter 2, you have Jesus being the ultimate example and Jesus, as as it speaks about, oh, I think I've gone too far. Yeah, here is it. It speaks about let this mind be in let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. But God has highly exalted him. Therefore, God has highly exalted him. Passage in Hebrews talks about, I believe it's Hebrews, that for the joy that was set before him, he despised the shame. If anybody could have complained, it was Jesus. If anybody could have said, this is not fair, it was Jesus. And yet he went silent as a sheep to the slaughter. Why? For the joy that was set before him, he despised the cross because he knew the good that would come from it. And that's the same thing. We should count it all joy when we fall into various trials. Why? Because the trying of your faith produces patience. Let patience have its perfect work. James chapter 1. Good will come from it, so don't complain. God has his reasons. Don't complain about it. We should not complain about it, knowing the good that, that may and the good that will come from it. Now let's look back in our account, and let's also consider another reason to not complain or dispute, and that's earlier in chapter 1, where Paul speaks about, he, he says, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Jesus, as he went to the cross, he knew what was on the other side of the cross. He had faith, he had hope in the resurrection. I have the power to lay down my life, and I have the power to take it up again. He said more than once, in three days, he was going to, in three days, he was going to come from the tomb. And of course, he knew what was going to come after the tomb, looking towards the ascension. He tells the disciples, I am going to, I am going to a place. This Jesus whom you crucified, God hath made both Lord and Christ. I am going to a place. I'm going to prepare a place for you. So it's the same for Jesus. It was the same for Jesus to die was gain. And that's how it is for Paul. Later on, of course, in the account, 
you have the verse, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What's he speaking about there? He's saying, I can live faithfully and I can die faithfully. I've learned how to be abased. I've learned how to abound. And the abasement may even be unto death. And he says there in chapter 1, to die is gain. So why complain? What's the worst they can do to me? <laughs> they can kill me. So if they do their absolute worst, how bad is that really? I just get to go see the Lord. I get to go see the one that I witnessed on the road to Damascus. I get to go see the one that I persecuted all that time. I get to go see the one I get to go see the one who saved me now. So how bad is that really? So why complain and murmur? Why dispute about it? Something else we might consider. Here in chapter 1, at the tail end, look down a little bit. Verse 17, Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, and I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them a proof of perdition, but you of salvation, and that from God. You know, here as he talks about it, and he says that they needed to conduct themselves in a certain way, frankly, to not give their ad adversaries the satisfaction. <laughs> and there's something to be said about that. If we as Christians just gripe the whole time, you know what people will probably say? Well, good grief, I thought, <laughs> what's the point of being a Christian if you're just, what's the point of being a Christian if you're just unhappy all the time? What's the point of being a Christian if you don't... What, what's the point of being a part of a church if you don't love the church? What's the, being, the point of being a part of the body if you don't love the body? What, what's the point? If you're just miserable all the time, what's the point? And so that's what our adversaries would say. So Paul says, don't give them the satisfaction. Don't give them ammunition. Don't let them think things like that. You know, this concept of... What, what will our enemies say? That shows up at Mount Sinai. Moses says that. And that leads the Lord to repent. But it shows up other times as well. And so we think about, hmm, what, will, what would our adversaries think of that? And so therefore, we do what the passage says. That we stand fast with the Spirit. Stand fast in one spirit. With one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. Not terrified by our adversaries but we recognize the goal, salvation from God. And so, if we are granted to suffer for his sake, don't complain about it. Don't gripe about it. Worst thing, <laughs> the, the worst thing they can do, and it's what Jesus said, don't, don't fear him who kills the body. You should worry about the ultimate judge. That's who we should worry about. Hope this brief study has been helpful for you. Hope you have a good day. Pardon me, it is bright outside right now, and it's messing up with the exposure on my camera a little bit. It snowed here in North Ridgeville, so I'll try to try to take care of that before next time if it happens to snow again. But appreciate you. Appreciate you. Hope you're doing well. Join us tomorrow for another brief look into God's Word.